This is Evan Jager, Olympic Trials Steeplechase champ. Going to London, baby. You're watching Runner Space Live. Well, thank you, Evan, for introducing our show. Hey, Ian, do you have moves like him? I've got the moves like nope. All right. We'll talk about Galen's epic win in the 5K, maybe Brad Walker in the pole vault, Julie Coley in the women's 5K. But first, as Ian is demonstrating, Eugene can get a little weird at times. But you know what happens is you get accustomed to the weirdness. You want to do something weird, like pop your... Hang on, that was a bad one. But for people from out of town, they aren't used to this weirdness that Eugene possesses. So we thought we'd go and talk to him and ask him what the weirdest thing they've seen in Eugene is. Take it away, Matt. All right, we're here with Randy. Hey guys, we're here with Ed. We're here with Jeff, Renee. We're here with Cynthia and Rosie. Eugene, of course, notoriously strange. Kind of a weird place. What is the strangest thing you've seen in Eugene thus far? I wouldn't say it's strange. Just compared to Indiana, it's all the composting and recycling. You throw nothing away here. Weird in like a good way, probably. Very weird, but a very good way. Renee, have you seen anything weird here in Eugene? Yeah, actually, I saw a guy in a about a five foot bike, it was a tricycle, with a grill on the front, and his dog running behind attached with a leash. And there was smoke coming out of the grill, so he was cooking something up. Uh, where are you from? Uh, Chicago. What is the weirdest thing that you've seen in Eugene? I, I think so far today it has to be the guy riding his bike in a pink tutu with no underwear on past campus. <laughs> that was today? <laughs> that was today. Wow. So we should be on the lookout. What is the weirdest thing you guys have seen in Eugene, Oregon? Well, I really haven't seen too much word, only that you weren't a cap you got on. That's not the weirdest thing I've seen today. You think this is weird? I think the weirdest thing I saw was about five years ago, a woman in the mall dressed like a Christmas tree. She was very comfortable with it. Oh, was it around Christmas time? No, I think it was like July. You know, whenever you get the spirit, I think that's when you should go for it. What do you think was the mental process in the morning when he woke up and thought, what should I wear today? In Eugene, I don't think it makes much difference, so he just went for whatever was comfortable, apparently. What's more comfortable than feeling pretty in a tutu? <laughs> while being free and naked. You want to wear the duck hat? I'm giving people who play our show an opportunity to wear the duck hat. You know, just so you can get a little weird, I suppose. I'll have you know this is very this is a very common hat in Eugene, Oregon. Oh, I see. This is this is a duck. Quack quack. Would one of you like to wear it? Uh, okay. You want to put it on? <laughs> Welcome to Eugene. Quack. What a celebration of our city. Tricycle barbecues. I liked your answer. Would you like to wear the honorary duck hat? Sure. That's right. That comment qualifies for weird enough to wear the duck hat. There you go. I like how, how everybody's putting that on. I, I should probably be the most concerned since I keep putting it back on after everybody gives me their head I promise. Yeah? Do you use head and shoulders? Oh, yeah. Herbal essences? Everything. All right, well. <laughs> Now, this is the weirdest thing you've seen in Eugene, right? Yeah, it's close. It's definitely close. Hey. That was kind of weird, too. Weird. <laughs> All right. Renee, thank you for helping keep Eugene weird. Thanks for the hat, Matt. Yeah. Weird. Let's kick it off with the men's 1500 prelims. No big surprises here except Kyle Merber, the collegiate record holder from Columbia who ran 335 this year, didn't make it through. On the women's side, all the folks that you thought would make it through, made it through. Good job, ladies. In the men's pole vault, Brad Walker won 18 feet, seven and a quarter inches. He's going to London. Now the next four jumpers jump the exact same height, 18, four and a half, but only two of them had the A standard, Jeremy Scott and Derek Miles. So they're gonna join Brad Walker in London. Gonna get some tea, gonna get some crumpets, fish, possibly chips. Put another shrimp on the bobby. London. Other field event action, the men's discus finals. Lance Brooks got the win with 213 feet, nine inches. Now the steeple people was pretty awesome. Did you like my rhyme, the steeple people rhyme? Yeah. Okay. Evan Jagger showed some potential that he might be able to compete on an international level. He looked really good coming down that home stretch. He was smiling. He ran eight 
117, which is about a three second PR for him. Don Cabral in second. He set the collegiate record earlier this year. Kyle Alcorn rounded out the top three with an 822. And our buddy Max King, who has only been doing like ultra marathons, super long distance training, decided just to hop onto the track this spring, came out and got sixth. Now, now we, we don't, don't know, know which of the five cases was more dramatic. dramatic. The, the men's or the women's, but let's start with the women's. women's. That almost worked. <laughs> just um, trying something new, trying to keep things fresh. In the women's 5K, Julia Lucas of the Oregon Track Club took off with about three laps to go. So on the last lap, you could see she was starting to struggle, starting to tie up a little bit. But she had Abby Diagostino and Kim Connolly right right there. <laughs> they were just there. They weren't somewhere else because the they were there. <laughs> the line, Julie Coley just beat out Molly Huddle running 15-13 to Molly Huddle's 15-14. And Kim Connolly passed Lucas right at the line. Nobody could tell who got third. And it ends up that Kim Connolly got the Olympic spot by four hundredths of a second in the 5K. And not only that, but Kim Connolly didn't have the A standard going into the race, but achieved it by about two tenths of a second. She did what? Yeah. The men's 5K may have been the best race of the trials. I mean, Ashton Eaton's 1500 was epic, but Galen Rupp ended his losing streak against Bernard Lagat. He had never beaten the man. Galen took off with a lap to go. Coming down the home stretch, Bernard Lagat takes the lead. But no, Hart, wait. Galen comes back on Lagat. He wins the Olympic trials, completing the 5K, 10K double. The first time an American man has done that since the 19. 50s, but that wasn't even the best part. The best part was he broke Prefontaine's Olympic trials 5K record by two tenths of a second. Running 1322.67. All right, you guys, since today was such a special day, Ian and I are gonna do a special outro. We're gonna teleport down by the track and do a jumping high five to the song Moves Like Jagger. This is news to me. Let's teleport Ian first. Wait, no. I'm gonna move like Jagger. <laughs> and now me.